Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox, and we're going to work with mapping tools today. We're going to work with a tool called Google My Maps, mymaps.google.com. It's Google's basic mapping tool to create uh, small day turn maps, uh, anything in a spreadsheet of a thousand rows or less or a thousand pinpoints or less on your map. A uh, very popular tool and we're going to create a layered map. We're going to layer in a shape file of all of Chicago's neighborhoods and on top of it we're going to map a week's worth of pothole repairs in the city of Chicago from December of 2014. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of potholes in, uh, in the city of Chicago. Uh, so to work with some mapping tools, um, there are a couple places you can go on journalisttoolbox.org. If you scroll down the left hand side, you'll see our categories here. Um, and uh, you could go to the data visualization and online tools page that has some mapping resources on it. Uh, there's also a link here a little lower on the page uh, to mapping resources, which includes like mapping search as well as map building tools, all kinds of different tools. Um, and right here on the mapping tools page, uh, you'll see Google My Maps is the uh, top link at the uh, very top of that page. So uh, the link directly to it is mymaps.google.com. So if you want to pause and actually uh, open that up, uh, hit the pause button right now. And what we'll do today is a layered map using a KML file, keyhole markup language. That's what's called a shape file. It also comes in formats of KMZ, GeoJSON, many other formats. Uh, but KML works really, really well with Google My Maps. Well, where do you find these shape files of Chicago neighborhoods, or if you're looking for all the counties in your state, or all the congressional districts in your state, or maybe a map of all the uh, states in the United States that you wanted to create a voter, voting map with, or something like that? Uh, you have to go out and look for them on the web. Um, use your city, county, and state data portals. You can use data.gov. Uh, you can do broad Google searches. Sometimes we'll uh, uh, produce results. Um, but this one I found at uh, data.cityofchicago.org. Uh, it's the city of Chicago's data portal. Uh, they have a geographic boundary section that has all kinds of things in it, zip codes, you know, neighborhoods. In, in Chicago, they call the neighborhoods community areas. Those are the official boundaries for the neighborhoods. Um, and over here, uh, you can click on export um, and you can select KML file. I can hit that and download it. It'll download uh, right into my uh, downloads folder. And I now have a shape file of all of the uh, neighborhoods in the city of Chicago that I can layer into a map. Um, so in Google My Maps, this is the interface for it. Um, if you're logged into it, uh, if you've created maps before, you'll see, you know, you have past maps in here that you can double click on and open up uh, and edit. It auto saves, which is really nice. You don't have to go back and hit the save button a bunch of times. Um, so you should have in the upper left hand corner a red button that says create a map. Or you may have a red plus sign in the lower right hand corner that will create a map as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create map. And what I've, I've pulled off the city of Chicago's data portal um, is a long list of repairs, pothole repairs, uh, that took place in the city of Chicago uh, in one single month. Um, and it was the um, seven, a seven day period in the first week of 2017. So let me open up this spreadsheet. Here's what it looks like. It's got a creation date, a date completed, uh, pothole in the street was repaired, uh, pothole was patched, um, number of potholes on the block, and it's got the street address and zip code for it. It's also got the longitude and latitude for that pothole as well, and as well as location where it combines longitude and latitude right into the uh, uh, one cell, which makes it really easy to map them. So what we're going to do is layer this shape file in first, and then we're going to layer the potholes on top of it so we can see which neighborhoods have more concentra or higher concentration of pothole repairs in that first week. Um, one of the first things I like to do is always label my map. Um, it's very important that you label one of these maps. Because people find your maps two different ways. They find it by going to your website and looking at the map itself embedded maybe into a story. 
They also could find it through Google search, much like you'd find a YouTube video. And if there's no description or headline on the map, uh, you definitely want to have uh, those there because otherwise people just come in and look at the map and go, what is this? And they'll leave. Um, so I would type in a short description here. I'll just put in garble for the interest of time. A couple sentences about what the map is, where the data comes from, City of Chicago data portal, and uh, maybe a link to the source. I'll just do the sheet file. And then always put your credit on there as well and hit save. And then the first thing we're going to do is name our layer, first layer. So I'm going to hit rename this layer. This is three little buttons over here to the side of untitled layer. And I'm going to name this neighborhoods. It's always important to label your layers because you may come back to this uh, map later and have several layers on it and not know which each one is. This way you have them named and you can see exactly what they are. Plus they're also visible uh, on the a live map. So, you know, it looks a lot better to have them labeled for the readers. Um, so hit import. And here's where I can drag and drop or I can click this blue button and upload. Uh, I'm just gonna drag in my KML file. It shows you what formats it works in. These first two are Excel spreadsheet formats, comma separated values in Excel, KML or GPX files for shape files. So I'm just gonna drag in my KML file here in the upper left. It'll actually come in as Pepto-Bismol pink, uh, City of Chicago, real nice. They uh, give you pink background to your, your map, ugh. Um, but uh, a couple of different ways you can go in and change these colors. You can click on each individual neighborhood, uh, click on the paint bucket, you know, and adjust it to a, you know, maybe a more earthy tone. Uh, or uh, you can go over here, if you scroll to the top of your layer, you notice it says individual styles. Um, <clears throat> you can go in then and select community, uh, and it'll label them. Uh, and you can also go in and select um, maybe by community area, and it'll start adjusting the different colors uh, on there. So you just kind of have to fiddle around with it to come up with uh, a good color scheme for you. Um, and then you'll be able to come up with a, a nice little set of colors, or you can come in uh, and just do the individual colors on each uh, county here, and, and uh, you know you can come up with something a little better than uh, the pinks. Just clean that up a little bit. Easy to do. Now you want to add a second layer, and that layer is going to be your spreadsheet showing all of your potholes. So I'm going to rename this layer potholes. Hit import, and now I can just drag my spreadsheet in there. It's going to stop me and ask me a couple questions. What column would you like to position your place marks? I'm going to select location. I'm going to do lat launch. It's going to ask me a title for my place marks. I'm going to do street address. Uh, so when it pops up, it has a little headline over the top of it that says the street address. And notice it takes a little while for this to load because it's you know a little over 100 uh, pinpoints. And there's all of your neighborhoods. And notice when I click on it, um, it gives me all the information that came out of that spreadsheet. Um, I can go in and edit that too. Like if I didn't want the X and Y coordinates to show, uh, if I didn't want the community area to show, I could turn those off. And it'll, it'll actually carry through to all of the uh, pinpoints so you don't have to edit it on each one which is really nice. Um, I can also add in multimedia uh, maybe add a picture of a pothole or something I could go in and uh, upload that photo to the web and uh, uh, either uh, uh, cut paste the image URL in there or uh, pull it out of my photos or off my Google Drive uh, and add a photo in which is really nice. You can search YouTube videos and add those as well. Um, so now I've got the map in working order and I kind of want to position it uh, the way I want it to appear in the embed code that you embed on your website. So that's a pretty good frame right there of it. I could zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you know, if I want to zoom out a little bit, I could, but I'll bring it in here a little closer. Um, now to make this public, this is an important step. Uh, hit the share button here, uh, and it'll give you this little interface. Notice here it says restricted only to people uh, added who can open the link, and right now you're the only one who can uh, open this. So change to anyone with the link. 
Okay, now anyone with the link can view it, which is nice. So I can take that link either here or up here in the top field and share it and people will be able to see my live uh, map on the web. It's now public on the web. If you need to embed it, go to embed on my site, which is right here. It's right up next to the headline. It gives you a little iframe embed code and you can grab that little iframe embed code and embed it right into your web page. Note that it has a pixel width on it, so it's not responsive. You can change that number to 100 and the percentage sign, and it'll make it responsive so it'll fit on any size uh, device, phone, tablet, whatever. Uh, and then you can just take this and embed this into your web page, and you'll have a nice looking uh, interactive map that people can click on and uh, learn all about potholes in the uh, city of Chicago. So uh, there you have it. Again, it's mymaps.google.com. Uh, find a shapefile from uh, your city, county, state data portal. Uh, ask a PIO for it if uh, you know, it's not available readily online. Uh, sometimes you even have to FOIA to get these shape files. Uh, and have some fun with this mapping tool. It's fabulous. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.